That was such a good wedding. I just can't wait to edit this footage in 4K, 60 frames per second, 10 bits on my MacBook. Let's go. Oh, that groom was just wonderful. The bride was beautiful. This is gonna be such a good wedding. The footage is gonna be incredible. What is going hey, on? I, I don't know. I've been trying to edit this wedding for the last two hours. It's all laggy. Hold on. Oh my god. It's a disaster. Wait. Are you not using proxies? What are those? So, you may be wondering, what is a proxy? To put it simply, a proxy is just a lower resolution video file that looks identical to the original, but requires significantly less computing power to edit. Full resolution files can be difficult for your computer to process, but proxies are a great way to bypass these limitations and make sure that your editing workflow is significantly more efficient. In Premiere, proxy files are directly linked to the original media and can be toggled on and off. When the project is complete, the video will export with the full resolution media. This is one of the greatest editing hacks and is absolutely necessary to an efficient editing workflow. Start using proxies for every wedding and pretty soon you won't believe you were ever editing without them. Proxies are a useful tool when dealing with files that regularly slow down your computer and make editing a nightmare. Especially on a laptop, there's a much higher chance of your computer slowing down while editing these big 4K 10-bit files. The lag can be a real buzzkill to your creative energy and might even make you want to throw your computer out of a 10-story window. I know that you know exactly what I'm talking about. For weddings, there's an entire day's worth of files that your computer needs to reference and process at the exact same time. Proxies ensure that these files load quickly and allow you to edit through the day with ease. Another important aspect of wedding films is multi-camera shooting and editing, and it is ideal to be able to link and cut between three to four cameras. This is nearly impossible without using proxies. Creating and editing with proxies will streamline your editing process by allowing you to find files, build your story, and move through the timeline with far less lag. It truly gives you the freedom to create without the limitations of your computer getting in the way of your creative flow. So now we're gonna pass it off to the proxy poppy himself, Young AG, to show you how it's done. Oh, boo. Now that you know what a proxy is, we're gonna pass it off to AG, who's gonna show you how to create and use proxies in your project. Professional, that's the buttoned up version, which we're not gonna use. Welcome, friends and family. Today we're gonna to be going over on how to create proxies. So first, we're gonna open up Media Encoder here. We'll hit this plus button here to create a new preset. And we're gonna create a new encoding preset. We're gonna call this 1280 by 720 encoding. Make sure that your format is QuickTime and the preset for Apple ProRes 4 to 2 proxy. You'll want to uncheck the width and height, and you want to type in 1280 by 720, and then we'll go to the effects panel and add an image overlay. Make sure you download and save the proxy PNG file somewhere that you won't delete it at. Hit OK, and we like to position ours either in the top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right to ensure that it's not in our way of, of viewing our footage. I'll pick bottom right here, hit OK. Now that we have the 1280 by 720 encoding, we will right click and hit Create Ingest Preset. And we'll name this right away, 1280 by 720 Ingest. There we go. Make sure that this right here is checked, transcode files to destination, and it doesn't matter which destination you have it, it will be changed each time you open your Premiere project. So we can just hit desktop, there we go. 
And then your format, make sure it's QuickTime. And your preset, make sure you click the one that you just created. So 1280 by 720 encoding. And all you have to hit is OK. So now we'll open Premiere. We'll create a new project. Choose a destination. This one will be going to 2022, Justin and Alexa. And we'll create a new folder and we're gonna call this proxies. We'll select this folder, rename this J and A proxies. Now you'll want to import all of your footage from your wedding. So go ahead and drag all the files that you need proxies for, which I would recommend every video file from the wedding you shot. Wait for this to load up. So once your footage is all loaded into Premiere, you are going to highlight all these, right click and hit create proxies. And the first step, yours will more than likely say H.264. You do not want that. So hit QuickTime. You're gonna add an ingest preset. And what I always like to do, put this to the side here, and we're gonna have to look for it. So go back to Media Encoder, and you're going to go to your ingest preset here, right click, and reveal preset file. So this is telling us exactly where this is located at. So AG, Documents, Adobe, and so on. So we're gonna have to go and find that through Premiere. So go to this PC, and you'll select this here, the ingest one. There we go. And now we're gonna select the location you want to store your proxies. So Justin and Alexa, open this proxy folder, hit select folder, and hit Okay, now it's going to create your proxy jobs and Media Encoder will automatically open. So now that our proxies are created, I'm gonna show you guys how to toggle them on and off. So for most users, this will not appear in this tab here. So what you'll need to do, hit this plus button and drag this one right here onto the tab there. Boom, hit okay. And then this will turn on and off your proxy. So right now, this is the full resolution file. And then if you toggle it on, there goes your proxy. Since you just created your proxies from Premiere into Media Encoder, your proxies will automatically be attached. Next time you go to open up this project, possibly on a different computer or on a different hard drive, what will happen, your proxies might not be attached. So I'm gonna show you guys how to detach proxies and also how to attach them, and more importantly, how to attach them. So you'll select your footage, you'll right click, hover over proxy, and detach proxies. So now, if I click on this clip here and toggle, it does not pop up. So I'll go ahead and select on my footage, I'll right click, hover over proxy, hit attach proxies. So this is just like a me linking media. Um, make sure that the file name here is checked and then you'll hit attach. Go into whatever drive you have your footage stored at. And this is where you'll dive into your proxy folder. And I highly recommend making a proxy folder to store your proxies in. That way, when you go to attach proxies, it doesn't attach the original media. So we'll double click proxy, hit search, and it says right down here, found a file that matches the selected criteria, and hit OK. Then we'll go ahead and toggle these back on, and there you go. You're ready to rock and roll and edit faster than you could ever imagined. Before we go, we have five tips that will save you time and that will help you streamline your workflow when working with proxies. Tip number one, don't import proxies directly into your project. Instead, make sure that you link the proxies into the original files as AG explained in the demo. If you import proxies directly, they might end up rendering into the final export. Tip number two, 
Make sure that your proxies are turned on. It's easy to turn on and off proxies in your project, and this can be extremely helpful when color grading or before an export, but it can be frustrating if it happens by accident. So make sure you keep an eye on this little icon. It could be the only thing standing in the way of you and your happiness. Tip number three. We mentioned this in the previous tip, but do not color grade with proxies on. The beauty of proxies is that they contain very little data and allow you to organize your timeline efficiently. This also means that your clips will not carry their original 10-bit data that makes them so great to color grade. You don't want to color grade these low res files just to realize that your grade looks completely different when you relink the original clips. So make sure that once it comes time to color grade, you turn off the proxies. Render your proxies overnight. Rendering proxies can take hours. So doing this overnight ensures that your editing schedule isn't delayed by this essential step in the process. Tip number five, make sure that your cameras have custom file names. This key is one to implement before you even start shooting at all, especially if you're using several of the same camera at once. First, some context. When you look through your recorded files, you'll notice that each clip has a few letters before the clip number. For example, Sony footage comes named something like C001, C002, etc. So let's say you're recording a ceremony using three Sony cameras and each is recording its own version of C001. This will confuse your program when it comes time to relinking the original files to your proxy media in Premiere. Luckily, manufacturers allow you to customize how your camera names clips. So make sure that before you start shooting, your cameras are set to record under custom clip titles. That's all we have for you this week. We hope that this video saves you plenty of time, plenty of heartache. Before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you next week on Wedding Crashes University.